In relation to the dose, I know it's very common that the um, companies tend to dilute the, the vaccine. It is not a good practice, and I hope after this slide you understand the problems that you might face if you do that. This study, what we did is we have the HVT plus FB1 vaccine, and we administered it either at a recommended dose by the commercial house or at a diluted dose. This is the percentage of protection against malignant disease. And in this experiment, we have two different challenge viruses. We have a VV NDV, which is 75, and a VV plus NDV, which is 648. When we use the virus that is not so virulent, the ND5, you can see that it didn't matter if the dose was the high dose or the dilute dose, the protection was very good or the same. However, when we use the virus that is much more virulent, the 648A, those did matter. You can see how the recommended dose it still gives good levels of protection while the diluted dose didn't. Another interesting finding in this study was that even in those chickens that we didn't see tumors, that the vaccine protects against the development of the tumors, what we evaluate is the relative weight. The 100% will be the weight of control chickens. Anything below means it's below the controls. You can see how chickens that were inoculated with MD5 in, in red color, they were having much lower weight. And this negative effect on the weight, it was also affected by the dose. The full dose was having better weight than the diluted dose. What that means is that even though we might not see a negative effect on the development of tumors, by reducing the dose, we might see negative effects on other aspects of the disease, for example, immunosuppression. So as a summary for seeing what is the danger of reducing dose, for once we can seriously diminish the efficacy of vaccination, and it's extremely difficult to predict because there are many different effects, many different factors that will affect this negative effect. The challenge virus, for example, as I mentioned in the previous slide, the initial vaccine dose is not the same diluting the vaccine that started with 10,000 PFU than one that started with 1,000 PFU per dose. Of course, the vaccine use. We recently did a study in which we used different response, and not every response was giving uh, the negative effects when we reduce the dose. Some, they are more permissive than others. So remember, this vaccine is is unique, even if they have the same name. And follow manufacturer recommendation, because the company that produces the vaccine is the one who knows the best which doses you need to have your best protection for that particular vaccine. I want to fin finalize this uh, second part of the webinar, speaking about methods to optimize malic disease vaccines efficacy. And I want to speak mainly about double vaccination, because it's a topic I have been studying in the last 10 years. Of course, we have other aspects like mixing serotypes, which is what we call protected synergism, or use adjuvants, which has not been very much exploited. But let me summarize here the double vaccination results that we have. And when we use revaccination of malignant disease, the effect is much better if the second vaccine is more protective than the first vaccine. So if you use HVT, you might want to use the second vaccine as SVT, SD1, or RISPIN, not SVT again. In the same way, the best protocol is when the first vaccine is administered in OVO and the second vaccine is administered at day of age. I know a lot of people vaccinating, revaccinating the farm, but to optimize the effect of revaccination in OVO versus followed by subcutaneous infection at heart is the best protocol. And the rationale for this is when we administer HVT in OVO, we fasten the maturation of the immune system, so it responds much better to the second vaccine. In fact, it responds much better to any antigen. That's why also in our vaccination works so well. 